How does the universe work? What does everything consist of? Is space infinite? What is time? Will the world end? For millennia, humanity has been searching for answers to these great questions. One theory replaced another, each was more accurate and more complicated than the previous one, only the truth constantly slipped out of hand. But everything changed when she appeared. Theory with difficulty. So okay, stop stop, it seems that they have already overdone it. Hello everyone, Dima Pobedinsky is with you. Sorry for the extra pathos. It's just that now we will be answering very global and fundamental questions. And string theory has been asked to tell me for a very long time. So the lapels. So, she is known for claiming to be the theory of everything, that is, she can explain absolutely any detail in the universe, starting with such serious things as the structure of atoms, molecules, elementary particles, electromagnetism, gravity, nuclear decay, stars, galaxies and ending with where socks go and why colo with mentos foaming so much. Sounds impressive. To reveal all the secrets of the world and understand how, what is interconnected with what. In fact, everything of course, is not so simple. The string theory works with great reservations and not everywhere. So, of course, she does not reach the great status, but this does not prevent her from making a great contribution to the development of physics. It can be called revolutionary. Well, it has not yet been proven that it is not true. So maybe that's the way it is. However, the most interesting thing is that as soon as you begin to understand string theory, you encounter such unusual things as particles that move faster than light. Additional seven dimensions, galaxy-sized collators hidden from us, consoles for tuning the universe, elementary particle twins, quantum gravity and much more. In general, it will be very interesting. Let's go. They want to start with a couple of reservations. Why do we need school knowledge? To understand string theory, you need to understand what stage science is at right now. In general, it develops, we can say, cyclically. Fundamental theories trying to explain the structure of the world are replacing one another. That is, when the dominant theory can no longer cope with the description of new accumulated phenomena, it comes up with another one. Well, it is replaced by another one and so on in a circle. For example, thousands of different substances were previously considered the most fundamental, water, gold, glass, clay, salt. They were replaced by a little more than a hundred chemical elements. We see them all in the periodic table. Then it turned out that the atoms of any elements consist of electrons, protons and non-thrones, and so on. And what have we come to? At the moment there are 17 particles that are considered fundamental. Here they are all in front of you. Some are the building blocks that make up everything around. Y and dequarks form protons and neutrons. Add electrons, and you get the atoms that you and I are made of. Viruses, giraffes and curling irons. Planets, stars, galaxies. Absolutely all gluons, photons. And these basins are carriers of interactions. By exchanging them, the particles attract or repel. Well, depending on the charge and other parameters. This is how forces arise. They determine the size, shape, and stability of the nuclei of atoms and any molecules. And, by the way, as for the Higgs boson, it is generally useless in itself, but it allows you to understand where the particles get mass from. In general, we can even say that this is a kind of modern. The modern periodic table is the composition, the ingredients that make up the universe. Why other particles are needed, by the way, is not yet clear at all, but perhaps they are like a seasoning, without them it would not be the same. This whole set is called the standard model. And, by the way, it is important to note that in it all the particles are points that have no dimensions. We draw them with balloons. Well, for beauty and convenience, the interaction between particles is described by quantum field theory. And this is the most accurate, the most fundamental and the most global theory of all that we have. It allows you to explain, calculate and predict very, very, very much, but now not everything. Firstly, with the help of the standard model, it is impossible to just take and explain why the masses, charges and other parameters of particles are exactly like that. Why is an electron 1800 times heavier than a proton? Why are the charges of quarks one-third and two-thirds? Why does a neutrino have mass, but no carbon? 
It looks as if someone tuned in to a huge remote from the universe. Yes, and so precisely that nothing has fallen apart yet. But, of course, I want to find some other explanation. Secondly, the standard model does not describe the nature of gravity in any way. Yes, she pretends that the forces that control the stars and galaxies simply do not exist. Here, of course, there seems to be a way out. Gravity is perfectly described by the general theory of relativity as a consequence of the curvature of space-time. And why not tie them up, as it were? But it turns out, nothing. The theory of relativity and quantum theory are not compatible at all and in many ways even contradict each other. So gravity is a big headache for the standard model. I'll explain why later. Thirdly, the standard model does not answer what dark matter, dark energy is. Why are there more particles in the universe than antiparticles? In general, she already has a lot of flaws, and she can't cope alone and can't describe everything and everything, which seems to hint that there may be something else behind her, some more fundamental structure and structure of the world. String theory is an attempt to find this device, to create a fundamental theory that could describe in uniform terms absolutely all observed phenomena. This is another step towards understanding how our world works, how it works, and most importantly, why it is exactly like this. Now, maximum attention. Let's figure out how successful this step turned out to be. So, in string theory, elementary particles, which make up absolutely everything, are not point objects, but having a certain length, that is, strings. They can be closed, they can be open. Their dimensions are monstrously insignificant, about 10 to minus 35th degree meters, which is a hundredth of a billion times smaller than an electron. So even on the scales of elementary particles and their extent is not noticeable. Strings can oscillate, and at strictly defined frequencies. And each frequency has its own particle. This string is vibrating. So this is a photon, and this, this is an electron. And it is the vibrational state of the string that determines the mass, charge and all other parameters of absolutely all particles. That's why they are like that because that's how the strings that make up the universe vibrate. Strings can merge with each other, break apart. This corresponds to the absorption and emission of particles. In general, everything really looks very slim and beautiful. String theory perfectly explains gravity, well, more precisely, it allows you to make friends with quantum theory and relativity theory. And let's now figure out why this could not have been done before. It is often said that the reason is in the structure of space and time. In the theory of relativity, it is smooth and even at any scale. But quantum theory assumes that virtual particles are constantly appearing and disappearing in a vacuum in the void. Yes, if you thought that a vacuum is a void, you are all stuck in the worldview of the last century. Now this is not the case at all. Now it is believed that the vacuum is simply teeming with constantly emerging and disappearing particles. And since they have a lot of energy, they bend this space-time on very small scales, which is why it becomes so curved, so bubbling and generally very, very uneven, which, of course, completely contradicts the theory of relativity. But in fact there is another reason for them. Let me remind you once again, in quantum field theory, forces arise due to the exchange of virtual particles, and in relativity theory, due to the curvature of space-time. And if everything is combined, then there must be a particle a carrier of gravity, a graviton. But if we consider it as a point object, then this is an enchanting failure. Since it is tiny, a mega-strong gravitational field arises around it, such that it generates secondary gravitons, and they generate more and more, and so on indefinitely. Of course, we do not observe this in nature. In fairness, I note that similar things happen with the usual photons, there are electrons. But there the configuration of the fields is slightly different, and scientists have learned to explain why we do not observe this in nature. This was called renormalization, but what to do with gravitons? Well, it's not clear at all. And in fact, here it is, the most fundamental level of inconsistency, inconsistency of the theory of relativity and quantum physics. And what about string theory? Yes, he's just handsome. In it, after all, the graviton has some size, which means that there is a strong gravitational field around it, though. Yes, but still not indefinitely. Therefore, the occurrence of secondary gravitons does not have such an avalanche-like character. And we can observe similar things in the universe. 
We can see it in nature. So the string theory copes perfectly, everything is beautiful there. As for dark matter and dark energy, string theory does not yet offer any ready-made solution, but it is so flexible that he will certainly be able to explain these riddles. Yes, it's only time to refine the theory, well, and more experimental data. In general, everything looks like a complete view of physics theorists rejoice, women throw caps into the air and shout hurrah. In general, everything is just super. But the joy was short-lived. Problems began to pour in one after another. And that's when it became really interesting. The first version of the theory with Trude, developed back in the 60s, predicted the existence of attacking a particle with an imaginary mass that moves faster than light, and also backwards in time. It is clear that such a fierce contradiction to everything that we observe. So this tank needed to be fixed urgently. Moreover, this theory described only Basin's carriers of interactions, and there was not a word about farmers, well, that is, quark liptons, of which everything consists. Therefore, an update called the Superstru theory was soon released. In it, each basin has a supersymmetric partner a particle of a double, which is a fermion and vice versa. Yes, it sounds wild, but it's like a world made up of photons, only they have different names there, Fatina, Fixina, Squarks, Lepton. It even sounds cool, yes, supersymmetry. And also from some particles of a completely new kind. Only now it was necessary to discover them somehow experimentally. And the theory predicts that they are quite heavy, so they are unlikely to occur in nature. But such particles can be created artificially on accelerators. And how many of them do you think have been discovered so far? Do you understand? Yes, that's how many none at all. So it's not proven yet. But these are still flowers. It turned out that in order to be consistent with the theory of relativity, string theory must be formulated in 10 or even 26 dimensions. And the problem is not that there are so many of them. Why not? The problem is why, in fact, we are not observing them. The first assumption is that they are simply rolled up on a very, very small scale. How this can be, I have already shown in one of the videos on the example of Pac-Man. Only there we twisted the entire universe, and here the dimension closes on very tiny scales inaccessible to our observation. But the convolution of six dimensions may not look so beautiful. Perhaps it's something like this. The paper is chewed, but here we do not choose. That's how the world works. The second assumption is localization. Look, the same Pac-Man lives in a two-dimensional plane. He can't break out of the screen, so he has no idea that there is also a third dimension. And what if, for some reason, we are also localized in our three spatial dimensions and cannot escape from them? What if the world we observe is some kind of three-dimensional plane that is embedded in space larger than dimension? The most interesting thing is that it can be checked. Just as Pac-Man can guess that there is still some kind of dimension, having discovered something that suddenly appeared in his world. Similarly, if we see a violation of the law of conservation of energy somewhere, it will tell us that something has appeared from another dimension that we have not observed. That's just that no violation of this law has been found in any experiment so far. In general, it turned out that string theory has a lot of disadvantages. Plus, in the mid-80s, they found out that supersymmetry can be included in it in five different ways, and these are five different theories. In the 90s, it was possible to understand that this is all a manifestation of an even more global M-theory, in which there are 11 dimensions. But it didn't make it any easier. There are more than just strings in this theory. It operates, among other things, with Brin's oscillating surfaces and not only two, but also three, four, and in general n-dimensional. And at this iteration, everything became so complicated, confusing and unclear that it no longer looked like a beautiful, elegant theory that could explain how the universe works. Well, alas, and ah, the trickles weren't playing so well anymore. Song. It didn't work out. What do we have for the 2020th year? String theory hasn't been discounted yet, but it's not as popular as it used to be. And there are several reasons for this. Firstly, the experimental literature simply does not yet have experiments that can confirm its correctness. Of course, one option is to build a huge accelerator the size of an entire galaxy. That's when we can get to such microscopic scales and understand whether there are strings or not. And, of course, everything is fine with the construction of large and extended facilities. But here, as if in space, it will be necessary to build.
but this is more difficult. Therefore, there is another option, to count something, calculate using string theory, and if this coincides with reality, then it is already a reason to think that, in principle, it can be correct and true. But this is exactly what the second problem prevents, string theory and the ones that followed it turned out to be so mathematically complex that there are not even exact methods for solving these equations yet. That is, physicists came to mathematicians, they say, help to solve, and they are like, we don't know. We haven't been through this before. So the physicists had to get to work themselves, and some difficulties have already been overcome, but still a lot of these theories are calculated only by approximate methods, which is not cool. So we still can't test string theory for sure. Thirdly, in the 2003 year, it was discovered that there were a lot of options for convolution of the 11-dimensional theory to the 4-dimensional space of time, the so-called landscapes of theories, 10 to the 500th degree of pieces. And this is some kind of nano needle in a hyper haystack. Because it is not clear at all what kind of landscape theory is implemented in our world and what to do with this fact, no one still knows. But fourth, they are already pretty good at competing theory. For example, quantum loop gravity. It assumes that space and time are not continuous, but consist of some discrete parts that are connected to each other in a certain way. Well, like loops, this allows both particles to be described, and the theory of relativity with gravity to please. In addition, there is an assumption that some elementary particles are not the most fundamental and consist of even smaller, so-called prions. This is hinted at by the fact that there are three generations of quarks, three generations of leptons, some kind of symmetry between them, and much more. So string theory already has a lot of competitors and quite strong ones. Which of the theories being developed will be able to better explain the standard model, make it friends with gravity and explain the phenomenon that lies beyond the possibility of this theory, we do not yet know. String theory was a great attempt. We have taken a step in the right direction, but so far we have come to the wrong place. But this cannot be called a failure, because it allowed us to look at things a little from a different angle, which is already a great achievement. After all, figs with them, with strings. Perhaps the world does not consist of them, but the fact that it can be 11-dimensional, supersymmetric, that dimensions can be collapsed, localized, this already makes us think in a different way. Perhaps we will even abandon the concept of space-time. Perhaps even these are not fundamental things. The contribution of string theory to the development of physics, although it turned out to be not as global as planned, is still quite large. After all, she showed that everything can be arranged completely differently, and sometimes you need to look for the truth completely in the wrong place and in a completely different way. But, you must agree, this is exactly how everything is brilliant. So be a little bit like string theory, and then something great will not keep you waiting. And that's it. See you soon. For now.